On the 27th of April 1978, workers arrived at a construction site near Willow Island in West Virginia. They were there to advance the construction of a cooling tower, an ordinary day's work on a project that had been in progress for months by this time. One tower was already completed, and the second was well underway. Before it was completed, however, one of the worst construction accidents in American history would take place. Throughout the 1970s, many coal-powered power plants were built along the Ohio River to help meet the growing demand for electricity in the United States. One such power plant was to be built near Willow Island, a small unincorporated community in Pleasants County, West Virginia. The Allegheny Power System, an electric company founded in 1925, was behind the $677 million build, and they hired a New Jersey-based contractor, Research Cottrell, to construct the two cooling towers for $12 million. Research Cottrell had a great deal of experience in the field, having built 35 cooling towers around the country at that point. The two towers were to be 131 meters or 430 feet high. They would be similar in design to most standard cooling towers, a hyperboloid or hourglass-shaped concrete tower that was hollow on the inside. Research Cottrell had patented its own method of building such towers, a method that the company considered so advanced that the blueprints often weren't kept on site due to fears that they would be stolen. The conventional method for the construction of cooling towers involved a freestanding scaffolding built from the ground up, which would be constantly built higher to keep up with the height of the tower. This conventional method was time-consuming and expensive. Research Cottrell's preferred and proprietary method was much more efficient. Instead of building a scaffold tower from the ground up, they used a scaffold system that could be secured to the tower itself and moved upwards using hydraulic jacks as the tower was built higher. A system of cranes was also attached to the scaffolding to allow the hauling of materials. Each day during construction, a 1.5 meter, or 5 foot, layer, or lift, would be added to the tower. This layer of steel reinforced concrete would be left to set overnight before workers arrived the next day, jacked up the scaffolding, attached it to the new layer, and began the whole process over again. The first tower at the Willow Island site was completed in August 1977. Work begun on tower number two. By late April 1978, the second tower was built up to a height of 51 meters, or 166 feet. It was a cold morning on the 27th of April 1978 as a team of concrete workers, carpenters, and steel workers 51 people in total, made their way up to the scaffold system to lift number 29 to add that day's concrete. The scaffold was attached to concrete that had been poured the previous day, about 20 hours ago, in cold and rainy weather conditions, with temperatures close to freezing. As a bucket of concrete was being hoisted into the air by a crane, the stabilizing cable that was attached to the bucket suddenly went slack. The crane was falling inwards, and so too was the scaffolding and a layer of concrete from the very top of the tower. The collapse began at the point where the crane was situated, but as one section of scaffold and concrete fell inward, it pulled the sections beside it down too. This resulted in the collapse spreading rapidly around the entire rim of the tower in both directions, starting from the site of the crane and ending on the opposite side of the tower. Workers up on the platform had only moments to try and escape before the collapse reached them. One witness, a woman named Katie Robinson, told reporters, They walked back one way, and then they turned around, and I thought they were going to try to jump. But then, it all came down. Workers on the ground took shelter from the falling steel and concrete debris, and then once the collapse was over, rushed back in to try and find survivors in the mass of rubble at the bottom of the tower. Working in such a small community, the workers were in most cases searching for neighbors or relatives. 
four separate fire departments from West Virginia and another from Ohio attended the site and were joined by ambulances from two different hospitals. Paramedic Tim Stone was one of the first emergency responders to arrive on scene. He later recalled, We got there and pulled into the gate of the Willow Island place and there was all kinds of commotion going on. People were operating big machinery and pulling up rebar and netting and everything, trying to pick stuff off of people. Then some workers met us and said, They're all dead. I said, What do you mean they're all dead? And they said, Yeah, there's like 50 of them and we've checked, and none of them are alive. This assessment turned out to be correct. Whether they had fallen with the scaffold or attempted to jump clear before the collapse reached them, all 51 workers who had been on the scaffold at the time of the collapse had been killed. Though a fall alone might have been survivable, in this case it was not, as many victims either fell onto rebar or other construction material, or were hit by falling concrete and scaffolding. A surgeon who had been sent to the site to provide emergency care to the wounded was sent back to hospital. There were no treatable injuries. The premises of the volunteer fire department of nearby Belmont was turned into a temporary morgue. Distraught family members were led there to identify their relatives. Many were so badly injured that they could only be identified by the contents of their pockets. As the recovery operation continued, residents of the area offered support wherever they could, providing food and coffee for emergency workers, and helping to complete paperwork, including death certificates. Most residents knew at least one person who had died, and in some cases, many more. Local woman Angie Steele lost almost every male member of her family in the disaster, 11 in total. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, sent an investigation team who arrived on the day of the accident. Another team from the National Bureau of Standards joined them two days later. The accident had, understandably, garnered nationwide attention and sympathy. President Jimmy Carter visited the site to offer his condolences a few days after the disaster. The report into the disaster concluded that the cause of the collapse was the imposition of construction loads on the shell before the concrete of Lift 28 had gained adequate strength to support these loads. In short, the concrete hadn't been given enough time to set in order to be strong enough to support the scaffolding. This was partly down to the weather. It had been cold and rainy, which would have impacted the time the concrete needed to set. However, the concrete should also have been tested before it was used to support the weight of the scaffolding. On top of this, critically important bolts were missing from the scaffolding system, and the ones that were used were of insufficient quality. There was also only one access ladder to the scaffolding, and modifications had been made to the hoisting system without a proper engineering review. It was concluded that if all, or perhaps any, of these issues had been corrected, the collapse could have been avoided. OSHA cited Willow Island contractors for 10 willful and 10 serious violations, proposing a penalty of $108,300. The cases were eventually settled for just $85,500. The disaster? One of the worst construction accidents in US history prompted rapid change in the industry. OSHA adopted new guidelines that would protect construction workers, and changes were made in the US Construction Safety Act. It also enforced the testing of concrete before it was used to support any scaffolding system. The cooling tower was completed and remains in use. A memorial stands close to the site of the collapse listing the names of the 51 men who were killed that day in a disaster that remains the deadliest construction-related accident in the history of the United States.